What's up, everybody? We're back. Yeah. Hey, well, it's just, I don't know. It's just, it's just two of us. That was, that was less enthusiastic without the other two. Hey, welcome back to a Metalhead's journey. Hey, so uh, as you can tell, we're two men in this thing this week. Uh, Jason is busy doing adulting stuff, and uh, Adrian is busy with work working. Stuff. Um, so me and Dave decided we'd come on and uh, talk about an album that just came out a little bit ago. Uh, Dave, what day did that release? Uh, Friday, I believe. Last Friday. Yeah, this, yeah Friday. Uh, the ninth. Uh, uh, I am ill prepared for this. I apologize. I was listening to another record. Yep, yeah, June 9th. Um, and this is the new record from Scar Symmetry. Uh, this is part of the Singularity trilogy. This is Phase Two called Xenotaph. And, uh, you know, we'd done a couple of uh, reactions to the first couple of songs that came out. We did a reaction for Chrono Nautilus, and we did a reaction for Scorched Quadrant. And quite frankly, my face was fucking scorched off yeah. <laughs> from those two songs. Like, dude, these, these first two songs were killers. Yep. And there Absolutely. were still nine more songs to go on the album. So uh, me and Dave decided, you know what? We'd listen to it, give it a shot. And, uh, and if it was worth it, we would do the review and... We're here. We're here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would say worth it is an understatement. Uh, it's this is a. I mean, spoiler alert. If you've made it this far, you just want to know if the record's worth your time. Yes, it's great. Yes. Uh, um, listen to it. Look, I would. I would come out now and say that. Listen, you have to forgive me on this because I am. I am, absolutely biased, and I can't help it. This would be the album of the year right now if it wasn't for 72 seasons like if you take 72 seasons off the board i get it okay i don't want to hear it i i know that it's you know could be substandard for some folks but anyway outside of that this right now to me is like the new album of the year i mean i think this blows avenge sevenfold way out of the water <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't even think I don't even think it's close, uh, Dave. You, I, I would I've, put, listened, I've listened to both records. I have listened to both records, but Dave, you are the more proggy person between the two of us. So, I mean, what do you think between the two records? Um, I, first of all, I would say this is definitely in my top three as far as record of the year. I don't, you know, I, I would have to, um, I'd have to wait and see how the year pans out just to to solidify yeah. those. But I agree with you. This is absolutely an outstanding record. Um, you know. There's been some really good metal this year, and I'd say this is this is already separating itself for me just in uh, just in the handful of time that I've had with the record already. Uh, in terms of comparing this to Avenged Sevenfold, I mean they're completely different records. First off, so one one is good, one is not. <laughs> uh, you know they're for different different strokes for different folks, right? So uh, you know I think they're just different stylistically. You know is. And I do think there are some prog elements within this record for sure. Now I know it's it's, it's labeled as like a melodic death metal record, um, and that's completely fair and true. Um, but man, there are a lot of progressive elements. There's there's even some power metal like sprinkled in. If power death metal was an actual genre, uh, feel free to throw some we, recommendations yeah. in the comments too. We'd be if, here. Yeah, uh, but uh, I, I would say it's you know. Uh, Scar Symmetry, and I'm sure we'll get to this. They do a very good job of of mixing a lot of a lot of metal genres specifically um, yeah. into a very seamless and cohesive unit. That I I don't think a lot of bands really do this um, as as far as uh, do this as far as mixing those those metal genres as well as, as this band. And and at this level, like this high caliber. Oh, for sure. The musicianship um, on this record, uh, we'll get to is is unbelievable. Outstanding. Yeah, uh, I mean, look this this album is like the Princess Bride of of metal. It has everything, right? Yeah. For those that maybe don't get the reference, Princess Bride, greatest movie of all time, has everything, Agreed. right? It's got sword fighting, it's got monsters, it's got you know romance comedy it's got action comedy it's got everything in it right that's exactly how this feels man this this album has everything yeah. in it and just a fucking joy to listen to so wait well, hey, let's uh let's hit some of the history of the band here and, and of the album then we'll jump into the uh, metal rundown <clears throat> excuse me so we have uh so this is scar symmetry the singularity phase two xenotaph uh, Scar Symmetry was formed in 2004 when Jonas, and I, listen, I'm going to do my best here, um, Jonas Jelgren, Kelgren, 
uh, Henrik Olsen, Per Nielsen, Christian Alvestam, and Kenneth Seal decided to put together a brand new constellation that would express a fresh and heavy form of catchy death metal without any boundaries whatsoever. Uh, the band wanted to incorporate huge synth synthesizers into the music, along with blazing virtuoso guitar soloing, which would all be backed up with complex but catchy rhythms and every single and every style of singing known to metal in general. The band uh, has released seven studio albums, including the most recent album outside of this one, obviously Phase One of the Singularity tri uh, trilogy, uh, Neo Humanity. Uh, I took that off the band's actual bio page because there was no way I was going to be able to write it as good as that. So I, I took all that off of that, just yeah. so we know. Uh, phase two, Xenotaph, is the band's seventh studio album. This album is part two of a trilogy of albums called The Singularity. The album was actually due for a release in 2017. Um, and, I mean, this is a little bit of a reason why it's it's been nine years since the release of it. But I'm going to take some, some quotes from an interview that Per Nielsen did. It says Nielsen said things got delayed uh, when he joined Mashuga as a live member between 2017 and 2021, as well as when he joined Nocturnal Rights in 2017. Nielsen said he needed to step away from the Scar Symmetry after doing the band for so long, but notes that Scar Symmetry was never an, on an official hiatus. It's been a really, really drawn out process, said Nielsen, as transcribed by Metal Injection. Uh, I wrote the songs for Phase 2 back in 2016. The main parts of the songs were written back then. We recorded drums also in 2016, and then we recorded the rest on and off for the next few years. Then in 2017, I started playing with Mashuga, and I also started playing with Nocturnal Rights, which was nice for me because it was something that I needed at the time. I felt like doing something else after many years of doing Scar Symmetry. That sort of put Scar Symmetry thing a little bit on the side. We never went on a real hiatus. We were in cryo suspension or something. <laughs> That's so, great. It's it's also been delayed a year because of album artwork issues. Really? Which is crazy. Yep. So, but yeah, I mean, this album was due for release all the way back in 2017, and it's been it's been kind of up, up in limbo for a long time. So I mean, that's pretty crazy. I mean, look, the guy sounds like he's incredibly busy. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I mean, look, props to him for... Uh, like I, I do not envy what has to be incre an incredibly hectic schedule. Uh, but you know, for an album, it's interesting to hear that, Josh. And I, I didn't know that coming into this. Um, for an for an album that has had so much, um, like kind of a tumultuous, uh, you know, recording period. Uh, dude, you that does not come across on the record itself. Um, no. Um, you know, it. it this sounds like. You know, this sounds like it's incredibly well put together, which, you know, has got, you know, a testament to the members of the band who, um, you know, obviously, you know, just just hammered this album uh, home. And, you know, something else I had kind of forgotten in our initial reactions when we did this to the band, but I didn't realize there was, you know, basically three uh, vocalists, um, you know, Per Nielsen does backing vocals. Uh, yeah. And then you have a dedicated harsh vocalist and a dedicated clean vocalist um, in uh, Robert and Lars, uh, respectively, yeah. which I think like really, um, you know, I, I'm sure, you know, longtime fans of Scar Symmetry can very easily pick out those individual members when listening to the songs. But like for me, it it, it just like it comes across so seamlessly and I, I really enjoy all of the vocals specifically if we're going to kind of jump into musicianship here. Yeah. Um, what, 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 do you, what is your take on your musicianship? Man, for me, it's the first word I have is just unbelievable. Um, I think the lead guitar work in this from Peter Nielsen is it, it feels it's so good and it just feels so fresh. Like, I know there's other people that play in the similar style, but we don't really come across it much in the style of metal that we really listen to. Um, I mean, I know you listen to a lot of prog and, and stuff like that, but I guess I guess me, right? I'm representing the booger eaters uh, here for this review, and you know we we don't get a lot of real virtuistic uh, guitar players, right? We still get good like good riffs, good solos, but this is like I don't know. To me, this is like Harvard. Right, and I'm listening to fucking guitar solos from like Arizona State over here or something. <laughs> like, this guy is on a different level. The guitar playing, the riffs, and all the melodies on the album. 
I mean, there's so much going on. I've listened to it. I've only got a chance to listen to it three times. And I feel like I'm constantly finding new stuff and new songs every single time. Uh, I mean, the way the music's arranged is, I mean, it's so good, right? It, it doesn't, there, there can be like real abrasive changes, right? Like, I, I forgive me, I'm a Metallica fan. But like, let's go to like St. Anger, the song, where you go from that intro riff to that boom, that the little verse part of St. Anger, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a real abrasive switch, and it really is not that great. Um, yeah. But this album never really feels that way. And I think, I think this album really lends itself to people like you, Dave, that like to listen to albums like you know, following the track list. Cause every song on this, I feel like leads into like the next song. I there's every time I listen to it, I looked up and I caught myself. Like I thought I was still on like, I don't know, like, Alter Geist. And then I, and then I realized I'm on, you know, the, the Reich song. I can't remember. Uh, Reich's fall. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Reich's fall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I look up and I'm like halfway through Reich's fall and I'm like, holy shit, when did that happen? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I think, I think that part's done really well. In regards to the vocals, I think both of them are stand out, but I do prefer the clean vocals on this record. Lars Palquist. Lars, uh, yeah. I hope I'm saying that right. Yeah. Uh, dude, he kills it on this record. Like, he just brings so much melody to the mix, and the songs need it, and it's just, it's so good, man. Yeah. Now, I, I'm, I am, I am a booger eating moron when it comes to memory sometimes. So, I know that I've heard um, older, I believe, a Scar Symmetry album from like 2006. Six or eight. Uh, again. Yeah, it's 2006. It was Pitch Black Progress. Yes. I had that record. Uh, I showed you The Illusionist way back then. Yes, that was, yes. That was my first jam. introduction to this band. And I believe that 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 um, predates when Lars uh, joined the band. I believe he joined in 2008. Um, yeah, the original singer was on that record. That was uh, Christian Alvestam. Yeah, yeah. And he was good. But I do agree with you. I think Lars, I think um, uh, I, it's look. I'm not gonna. I, all the members of this band are fantastic. So if I don't specifically call out a member, this is me now saying they're all fantastic. But if I do want to call out some specifics here in regards to musicianship, I agree with you. I think Lars kind of steals the show for me, uh, along with uh, Nielsen's guitar work, uh, just throughout the record. Um, because I really feel like the guitar work is, is, is like both the riffs and I'm going to repeat a lot of what you said, <laughs> both the riffs yeah. and the solos are so well executed. Um, yeah. but they're also so different. Like the solo that's on Chrononautilus, right. That has that little kind of like bluesy jazzy yep. little solo, mm -hmm. and, you know, and then you go to something like a soul scanner or something like that. And it's, I mean, the solo is just ripping. It's yeah. so different. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think every solo is very different. I think the riffs are standout performance, but I really think the anchor of the record, um, the anchor is Lars, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, I think he really helps. Um, man, he just like his choruses and and when he s does sing when he sings some of the verses, it's so good, and it really helps them execute this balance between. The heavy abrasive uh, vocals of of Robert uh, that are really good. Like there are the opening, tr there are some openings to some of these songs. I believe uh, I could be like again. A lot of the songs bleed together when you're listening to them all at once. Um, but a lot of some of these songs open with really really heavy vocals and they're really well done. Yeah. But then Chron they Chrononautilus. I mean, yeah. it opens up with just a blast beat with just fucking nasty screaming. Yeah, and. And then right into that, it goes into like a soaring, uh, like almost pseudo power metal chorus. Uh, and it's just so well executed because I, I think I mentioned this to you earlier today. Like you never, like just when you get comfortable or feel like you've you've kind of had enough of one thing, you get hit with uh, with a, something different. It's almost like, like for those that, that work out, like you, you're never supposed to target one body part at you know the whole week you kind of target different things throughout the week so that you never get you never your muscles never like get hurt uh it's kind of like that like you get screaming vocals you get singing they slow it down sometimes they speed it up other times i just 
it's such an easy i mean it's an hour long but it's such an easy hour to listen to uh from a musicianship standpoint i i, I thoroughly enjoyed myself yeah i mean bleed that into entertainment value it, it comes in at 5808 uh it's 11 songs and i would tell you it feels like less it way feels less like way less than 5808 um, um we, such a breeze we historically do not call 58 minute records like a breeze to get through nothing wrong with lengthy records at least from my perspective yeah. but uh, we normally don't call 58 minute records a breeze uh, but in this case like you said josh i think you i think you stole it there you'll be listening to a song and then uh, you know you're just kind of you're kind of in it and then before you know it you're like three or four songs deep and you really don't even know how you got that far uh but because the break, there's there the, there's really no breaks in the songs the way that they're constructed on the album, uh, yeah. which I like. I enjoy that. Yeah, and it's not normally my thing. I do like to jump around on records, but I did listen to this record all the way through three times, like in a row. And I think it's probably consumed better that way. I mean, I'll certainly have some some highlights which we can go into right now that'll kind of go onto my master playlist, but. Uh, listening to this album like all in a row is really really good for me going into top tracks here um, i do have an honorable mention track um i mentioned this one to you earlier today it's altergeist and i think this really sums up like if, if i was going to show somebody like if somebody listens to this is like yeah i mean there's no way they really do all this shit in a song i'd be like let me show you this song because this song has fucking everything. It's got, I mean, brutal vocals, clean vocals. Um, but it also has, like, this real, like... I told you this earlier, Dave, and it's the only way I can describe it. It's got this real whimsical melody that goes through it that's done more on, like, keyboard. It's more of a symphonic line that... Yep. It really sounds like something that you would get out of, like, a movie. Like, I, I thought of Home Alone for some reason the first time I heard it. Like, it's... <coughs> excuse me. It's something like that. Um... It's just so interesting to me. And well, the first time I heard it, I was like, nah, you know, whatever. And I keep thinking, I, I got constantly keep going back to that song. I keep thinking about it. But um, so it's it's made its way to my honorable mentions because I, I do think that is a highlight for the record. Uh, the number three song for me, Soul Scanner. I mean, just crushing, soul crushing from the end, from the second that song starts. Yeah. Great guitar work on it. I love One it. One of the shorter songs uh, on the record, too. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I did not choose the shortest song on here, which was what? Overlord? Yeah. Overload? Overlord. Uh, um, Overworld. Overworld, excuse me. I'm sorry, I only listened to this album three times, so don't judge me that I don't know all the songs yet. Um, but that is also a good song. Uh, number two for me, the intro song for the album, Chrono Nautilus. Um, dude, that fucking solo gets me every time. That shit is so good, just that little jazzy thing. Uh, and then for me, I think far and away, what's the best song on the record is The Voyage with Tailed uh, Meteors. Um, just again, just you really get the best of everything that they do, but then they also have a nice little halftime riff in the middle of it that you don't get a ton of that from these guys. And when they did it, like it was, I wouldn't go so far as to say it was a breakdown, but just like a good halftime riff. Uh, dude, just a fucking banger. So A Voyage with Tailed Meteors was the biggest highlight for me. Yeah. So we have a lot of the similar songs here. So um, uh, number three for me is uh, is Altergeist. Um, just love that song. I think it's a I think it's a fantastic song. Uh, I got number two. I do have a voyage with tailed meteors. I also think that song is just excellent for pretty much start to finish. And I kind of have a tie. Uh, and for similar reasons, because they both again have that balance between heavy and 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 kind of uh, high end choruses, uh, and that's Reichsfall uh, and Gridworm. Uh, again, like just I believe Gridworm ends with this really heavy uh, outro, uh, but both yep. those songs are just ah, dude, they're so good. Uh, and look, I could have probably had. Uh, like the opening two tracks, Chronolonalus and Scorch Quadrant, are fantastic as well. I could have easily slid those in to my top yeah. top tracks. There's really no. There's, there's not, not a skipper, a skipper here. There's not a skipper. No, I would here for go. Me. I would have Reich. I would have Reich's Fall at number five for me. Like I love that song too. Um, can I also say that I feel like this band is probably a top tier band when it comes to song titles. Um, I'm trying uh, to think of other just like super fucking like weird and creative song titles, and they may be the winner. Yeah. Now it does make it incredibly difficult for me to say because I'm a moron. Uh, yeah. 
but they're hard to remember. Yeah, they are hard to remember. And I will say, in casual conversation, uh, it makes you seem. Uh, it makes me seem a little bit silly. Like, man, have you heard that song? Hyper. Uh, I can't even say it. Hyperborean planes. I have. Yeah, it's a good song. Yeah. But no, no, we're joking. I, 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 I think it's great. I, I love the, uh, like the, uh, the stylistic choice there with with um, with what they have going on. Yeah. And listen, we're big sci-fi fans, so this uh, yes. this certainly scratches that sci-fi itch as well. Uh, going into audio production, I had a hard time trying to track down who produced this record. I'm going to go with what my best guess is. Uh, I think it's probably Pierre Nielsen doing it. He seems to be kind of the steward of this band. Um, so I, I get the feeling that he's probably the guy that produced this. Um, At whatever. minimum, co-produced it. Co-produced yeah. it. Dude, fuck, it sounds great. Like, can we get can we get this guy to go produce the next Metallica record? Like, dude, it's the album sounds so full, so much power. Yeah, I mean everything sounds great. I don't, I have zero complaints. Yeah. You know, just uh, uh, as you know, as far as uh, with who produced it, I mean, per per Nielsen did uh, produce, mix, and master their the previous record, the Singularity Phase okay. One. So probably a safe bet that he also did the phase two if somebody yeah. knows if we're wrong please post that in the comments um yeah. and let us know that we messed that up but yeah yeah i certainly apologize for that uh well, let's move into the last part of the metal rundown here um this is what we'd like to call legacy so we we typically do this as part of our top 50 metal albums uh of all time list so we usually ask a couple of questions of you know, do you think it belongs on the list? And would you listen to more? So obviously, we're not going to ask the list question, but I mean, Dave, does this motivate you to listen to some more uh, Scar Symmetry? Um, absolutely. So, like, uh, like I said before, my my experience with Scar Symmetry is dated because th there are several members of the band that are in there now that were not in it when I listened to them last, and yeah. so um, I absolutely need to listen to Phase One, especially if this is like a you know a pseudo concept trilogy uh, that they're planning. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the stuff I saw online too was saying that Phase One was was actually a better record. Yeah, uh, which if that's the case, because I'm about to score this thing pretty high for us. Yeah. So if that's actually a better record, like I'm super interested in listening to that. I, I will say that I will say as of right now, I would find that hard to believe because I'm pretty high on this record. But if that is the case, I'm super excited. But yes, to answer the question, I absolutely think I have been missing the boat on Scar Symmetry. Um, I think, like I said, I think I heard the, the song The Illusionist. While it was good, I don't think... I think it was missing Lars, in my opinion. I think it was missing... I think Lars was kind of the key missing piece. And I also think their production value uh, has helped a lot for me as well. Which yeah. I'm sure sounds dumb to some people, but... Um, but, yeah. Here's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I'm definitely going to... I mean, tomorrow when I get in the truck, I'm going to turn on uh, Phase 1 uh and give that a listen which was that was called neo humanity so i'm gonna go back and check that out for sure supposedly it's supposed to be shorter and th they say this uh album is a lot more aggressive than that one yeah they said this is one of their more aggressive records in a long time obviously i mean you know it took them nine years to come out with the record so i don't know what a long time is but yeah anyway well hey this is where we give our scores for the album and just give you an idea of how we like to score the albums here for a lot of folks out there a seven would be kind of like their their average score for us, it's a five. So, if for us, if we give an album a five up uh, to all the way up to like a ten, then that would be something we would recommend for you. Obviously, anything four point nine and below is various levels of we would absolutely not recommend you listen to that record. Yeah. So, D Dave, you want to give your score first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, just to clarify, you know, anything nine or above is like legendary classic status you know so again we, we didn't even we usually have four guys on this channel if you don't normally listen to us here so um just to give you an idea our highest scored album so far is 8.98 and that's injustice for all so yeah. we haven't even cracked a nine yet now yeah it's just just two of us so it's probably easier to get a better score just because the averages yeah. but anyway i very much enjoyed this record i will be adding it to my regular rotation at least at least for this year it will be in that rotation of things that I listen to. And and it's 
like I said before, sparked my curiosity to go back into the into their back catalog. Um, I'm coming in pretty hot at an 8.2. I really, really enjoyed this record. Um, it's been a, it's been a, uh, the other albums of the year for me haven't been as big of surprises. I kind of knew they were going to be really good for me. Um, this was a surprise, uh, find for me personally. Yeah. I mean, we knew the overkill record was going to be good at the beginning of the year. Yep. Um, yeah, so I, I told you earlier in the day that I was going to be somewhere in like a high sevens, unless I listened to it a few more times and it like really like moved me. Um, I'm going to join you up into the eights, Dave. I'm going to give this just a solid eight. Okay. Um, you know, this thing, it gets better every time I listen to it. This is something that in, you know, when we do our year end recap this year for top metal records, I'm not going to be shocked if it's, if it's in the top three still. Like it's going to be hard for something to come in and unseat this record. So. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's an 8.1 average, um, which is a great, great score for us. Uh, just to give you an idea for how far back I have to go to find something that that an 8.1 doesn't beat on our top 50 metal albums list, I have to go all the way back to Death's Human, which scored an 8.2, uh, which I know some people will say, oh my God, that's sacrilege. How can you score it that low? Again, there's four people and one of them doesn't like death metal. So uh, a, there you go. I, I, scored, I scored it in the eights. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So I mean, this is a great record. Fantastic record. Uh, I couldn't be happier personally. No, this is absolutely a recommend here for the channel. So hey, hope you guys liked the video out there. Um, if you did, go ahead and give us a like. Give us a subscribe. We're putting out weekly metal content. we got metal reactions, metal reviews, and all kinds of other cool shit. And in the meantime, live long and prosper. Take it easy, everybody. See ya. Later. <laughs>